Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Uh, the background's a bit different. You might have noticed that we are down the farm, Toby and I, which is where our kind of editing studio lives, as well as all the kind of scrap cars that we've been tucked up with live. And that's no different for this video, the car that we're going to talk about today. But this video is probably going to be titled something like, I got stung with a part exchange, I got burnt with a part exchange. But I just thought we'd just use this as like a, a cautionary tale for you, because there's a few telltale signs uh, that I probably should have picked up on, on the fact that we were going to get burned with this, but Jason was dealing with it. Not blaming Jason, because he got kind of tricked as well, really, um, and I was busy doing other things. Let me set the scene for you. It was a busy Saturday, and uh, an older gentleman turned up on the forecourt and said something about wanting to look at our Vitara. We had a very nice 17-plate Vitara in stock. Uh, his English wasn't great, but luckily he'd brought his son along with him, and his English was much better. In fact, he was a doctor, it turns out. I don't think he said it to me, but he must have said it to Jason, because I kept hearing them say, yeah, doctor this, doctor that, and knowing doctors and things, which which should normally fill you with some confidence, wouldn't it? It turns out he was actually a doctor of criminology, so not, you know, surgeon or anything. Uh, that looks like you're eating your dinner. Not You wouldn't want me doing your surgery, would you? So he's a doctor of criminology, so he knows all about scams and tricks and ruses, and seems like he must just be an expert because they wanted to look at our 17 plate Vitara. And he did say, oh, we've got a Vitara to part exchange. Do you want to come look at it? And I was like, oh, it's okay. Well, come have a look at our car first. Make sure you want it sort of thing. He's like, oh, come have a look at our car. I was like, no, it's all right. Just make sure you want ours first because there's me busy on a Saturday and also just, you know, fat and lazy. So I don't want to walk over and look at your car unless I know you want to buy mine because otherwise I'm not interested in your car. But it seemed like each time I went and got them the keys, I thought it was just a bit of a language barrier, to be honest, with the dad. He was like, oh, come see our car. And I was like, oh, that's all right. See ours first, test drive it, make sure you're happy, and then we can deal with yours after. We'll definitely buy it from you. We'll give you a good price, blah, 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 but we'll just deal with that whenever. Anyway, so they went and had a look. They were interested. Jason went and did a test drive with them. And sort of each step of the way, like, come look at our car. Um, so Jason did go and look at their car. He test drove it and um, all seemed really good. It's quite tidy condition, nice low mileage. I just I think it's 58,000 miles. It's got MOT till October, the end of October. It is a 2005 Suzuki Grand Vitara. And he agreed to give them 1,500 quid, which I heard him say that, because he was looking at the cap prices. So 15, and the, you know, the dad's sort of, oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay. And I thought, mm, it's a warning sign. Yeah, probably a bit strong. And we have put some new rules in place. Don't start slagging Jason off. Sophie does enough of that, just kidding but complaining about like overpaying for park exchanges. I think when it comes to this older stuff, we're now gonna have a mechanic go out, check them, and you know, it's a bit of an impartial type thing then, which is to be fair is what Jason is used to doing because the long and short of it is, now that we've done this deal, um, it misfires like a pig. <sighs> and we couldn't figure out why it was so badly misfiring. When you fire it up, smoke comes out, which we'll probably find out in a minute. Uh, we had it in the workshop, thought maybe it'd just be a coil pack or something like that, but it turns out it's actually got low compression on one of the cylinders, so it just is never going to be right. Now, in hindsight, you think back, they're like, come look at our car, come look at our car. They wanted us to see it while it was hot, so therefore it was, everything's expanded and there was compression and it ran well. So it ran well when Jason drove it, but now that it's cool, it doesn't. So something they definitely knew, they drove from quite far away to come to this, they came unannounced. And they were like, come look at our car. They obviously wanted us to look at it while it was still hot. So if someone's kind of pressuring you to kind of look at their car, especially if it's hot, that should be alarm bells. And maybe we should have had, you know, if we had a bit of a suspicion, which we didn't because we were just so busy, didn't even think about it, that we would have offered to deliver the car to them so we could have tried their car when it was cold because they were a couple of hours away. The second warning was the fact that they were there saying, um, oh, wait, we'll have this done and that one, and it'll have this done, won't it? And it's got warranty and it's got this and whatever. Basically, they were trying to rule out any possible reason that they would ever need to bring that car back. Now, that sounds sensible, right? Most people want to do that. But it's the fact that when you, again, you look back in hindsight, they're like, hey, we'll have this done, won't it? And they'll have that done and this will definitely be done. You definitely service it and it will definitely have a brand new MOT, so it won't need, you know, they're just ruling out any chance of them ever having to phone us back up and say oh something's a bit wrong with this is there any chance you could sort it out which obviously is fine by us more than welcome people to do that and we'll get it sorted for them but it'd be a bit awkward for them now when we say 
your car is absolutely knackered and you must have known that there was no compression on one of the cylinders because you could barely drive it. So, yeah, clearly we got tucked up by the doctor of criminology. He crimmed us big time. We need to put in our like fine print. We've got a new system coming up about part exchanges that hopefully we can say, if there's an obvious fault that clearly was there at the time of part exchange that you haven't told us about, we're going to come burn your house down, basically, because we've got your details and you agree to it. No, obviously we're not going to do that, but you know, maybe try and chase them up for some money. It's an awkward situation, but we do just need to just, just be ruthless with these cheaper cars because Jason was pricing it to as if we were going to put it on our forecourt, which the dealership he's come from, they would have put that sort of thing in the forecourt, maybe tried to get two and a half grand for it, and that would have been fine. But I'm going to take a big loss on it now, maybe a grand loss on it. And that is our that was our margin in that car. We gave them that part exchange, that £1,500 would have been our profit. So now our profit from that deal is going to be 400 quid, if that. Um, so, yeah, quite irritating. Should we go and have a look at it, seeing as I've been waffling long enough? We'll go and see how bad it is. We'll try and drive it. And then, yeah, tell you what the plan is. Right, so here it is. Parked next to a lot of other cars that... Well, there's quite a lot down here. In fact, if you don't already kind of, you haven't joined Shifting Metal PX Gold Group on Facebook, feel free to join. I put 10 cars from here on there at the weekend, um, basically just seeing if anyone wanted to save them from the scrapyard. And if they did uh, and offered me better money than the scrapyard, people offered me things like two pounds on the Mars bar. Not very helpful, but if anyone did want any of those things, then I just need the space cleared so we can put good cars here and I would donate 50 quid uh, from each car to Jack's GoFundMe. Jack, the lad who we are running the raffle for. If you haven't seen my raffle, you need to go to feelgoodcompetitions.com. There's a course of VXR, there's a thousand pounds, there's a watch. There's even more competition. I've just been in the office then, loading up another car to go on there. So make sure you follow that and follow them on all the socials as well because you could win stuff and you'll help charity. That's why it's called Feel Good Competitions. Because even if you don't win, you can feel good that you've helped out a cherry. Anyway, we got the Grand tire that we're going to look at here. Got the ASX, that's a bit rusty. Got the Mazda MX-5 over there, a bit rusty. The Mitsubishi Shogun, dead. We've got my 7 Series over there, the cheap one that you might have seen if you're an OG of the channel. Toby probably can't see it. We've got another Grand Vitara that we bought in part exchange. Luckily, we only gave £400 for that one because that failed its MOT on rust. We've got a Toyota RAV4 that needs a fuel pump. Next to that, we've got a crappy little Fiesta 1.4 diesel that we took in part exchange, only for 400 quid, so that's not the end of the world. But um, since Sophie touched it, the driver's window doesn't go up anymore. Um, and that Cougar just needs a steering rack. That's not one of the ones I put up for cheap because it is a simple fix. Need to get around to doing it. Um, yeah. And that's it, that's all I can show you. There are other cars down there that we hopefully can get fixed and we'll make videos on in the future. Anyway, I'm waffling a bit. I just wanted to tell you how dire it is down here, but we're trying to work our way through it. So, our Grand Vitara, shall I pull it out so we can see around it? Toby can come around the back and hear and see what happens when we fire it up. So I'll leave it running so you can hear the comical misfire. I think it's trying to rev quite high now to sort itself out, but yeah, sadly that's not just like a coil pack or anything like that. It's something far more sinister. But yeah, otherwise it was a really straight looking little car with really good tires on it. It's like me after I've had spicy food the next day. Do you know what I mean? It's like that's horrible sorry I shouldn't have said that Sophie will kill me for that got a good tyre on the back there's no real and it stinks of petrol that's the other thing that's probably what's coming out of there hopefully it's not unburnt petrol but it does stink of petrol because that's basically what's happening is there's a bit of unburnt petrol because it's not creating the compression in the cylinder for those of you who don't have a mechanical background <laughs> like I do 
they call it. What is it? Squeeze, suck, bang, blow. Is that right, Toby? You've done mechanics more recently than I did. So it kind of squeezes everything together. Once it's under compression, it will explode. Then it sucks it out and I don't know, whatever. But anyway, you need compression in order to. The diesel doesn't even have spark plugs. It just ignites off the pure compression power. So yeah, we just got probably a bit of unburnt fuel coming through. So absolutely stinks of petrol and yeah. What a crap situation I wish I wasn't in. Just for a bit of comedy value, I'll grab a GoPro. Well, in fact, do you want to just, you can just come out in the car with me, Toby. We don't need a GoPro, do we? We'll just go and take it for a little spin and you can see how comically bad it is to drive. I'm amazed it's idling, to be honest. So this is where I wish I'd stepped in and done a vehicle score check. Because if you head to vehiclescore.co.uk and enter your registration, ours being Whiskey Foxtrot 55, Yankee Juliet Bravo, it's going to give us a score from 1 to 999 based on its MOT history, age, mileage, and many other factors for completely free. And ours only scores 359 out of 999, which is below average. It will go on to tell us lots of different things on why that is. We can even find out if it's ULES compliant, which it is, which is one good thing it's got going for it. Uh, bad bits, major issues have shown up in the last few MOTs. Now, if we go down here, here's some of our vehicle details. Tax, MOT, average miles per year, last V5 change which is really handy to know. And some bits which are blurred out, which a couple of commenters in one of my recent videos did say that I must have blurred out to hide the fact that the car had been written off because this looked like it says yes. Now, I'm sure most of you are smart enough to realize this is just an example and this is what the free check looks. If you wanted to do a check, you can click this button and you can do any one of the three different checks that vehicles score offer. And if you are going to do that, make sure you click promo code and type in shifting metal 20 and you will get 20% off. But that aside, we can go down here, look at our mileage tracker, which all looks pretty good. It's always staying consistently going up or at least staying the same. And we can look at estimated values. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Don't think we're going to get that much. If we scroll down, we've got our MOT history here, which did pass with a couple of advisors not so bad but prior to that it had a pretty bad failure a lot of them being to do with exhaust carbon monoxide content after second fast idle exceeds default limits exhaust hydrocarbon content after second fast idle exhaust lambda reading lots of different things that said that yeah that was nursed through its MOT back in October I think they did something they put a treatment or something in it I imagine because that piston probably was losing compression at that point as well. There is absolutely tons of features on here, including an AI mechanics. If you had a problem with your car, you can ask it a question, why is it doing that? And it will give you an answer. But most importantly, we've got these three checks you can do. The salvage report for £2.97, the ultimate report for £8.97, or the ultimate report plus, which is the same as the ultimate report, but also includes £10,000 worth of Xperia data guarantee. So you can check whether it's been an import export salvage check, whether it's got finance against it, whether it's a category vehicle, whether it's been completely written off, whether it's been any signs of clocking, whether it was an ex-taxi, whether it's been stolen, and many, many other things. And as I say, use my code SHIFTINGMETAL20, you get 20% off. And with the Ultimate Report and the Ultimate Report Plus, you also get entered in for their monthly £600 cash draws. Yeah, it is just like shaking you. I think, in all honesty, let's get rid of all this crap as well. We might have made it slightly worse in our attempts to figure out what's going on because we had to car. You can hear Adrian revving it away and testing the compression and whatever. But and obviously, I expect it gets better over a longer journey once it's got got on hot. I also, you know, would allege that they've put some thicker oil in. Um, to kind of try and seal up the piston rings or whatever. Hopefully it will show how much, just how much this jerks around. Uh, indicators on the right, because it's, maybe it was Japanese originally or whatever. It's just at that age. Oh yeah. So it's better at higher revs, but these lower revs, you can hear it. Yeah, so it's all right when you kind of accelerate. It's going okay, it's mm, still a bit jerky, but then you let off and it just kind of dies on you. And driving this from the garage to the farm, when I first brought it back here to get it out of the way, it, it cut out on me at least three times. And the first time I thought the engine had just died. 
because all the warning lights and everything came on as they would do. Oh, pheasant. Dumbest creature known to man. Oh, we lost power. So yeah, I, I meant to look up where these customers were. Obviously I couldn't tell you because that would be a breach of GDPR, but just my own curiosity to find out exactly how far they would have driven this because I found it hard driving it like 10, 15 minutes, to be honest. So yeah, I got a feeling they came like two hours away. It's a shame because unlike the other Grand Vitara that we had, which has failed its MOT on rust, but otherwise is a little 1.6 auto, albeit on 138,000 miles. This is only on 57,671. Um, that other one's still drivable, so if you wanted to use it for an off-roader or whatever, you could do. But you obviously wouldn't want to do that with this because it's an absolute bag of shite and just would be a nightmare to drive. There's a roof of a caravan up here. It's a bit of a local attraction, if you'd like to see that, Toby. How that ends up in a lay-by, I have just no idea. You know what my patient's like, Toby. Can you imagine me trying to drive this? <coughs> Not that I'm irritable or anything, but it's starting to get better, I think, as it warms up. It certainly didn't get that much better. She likes the revs. So it's currently doing like 500 RPM. It should idle about 900. Oh. Well, at least there's not, you know, a massive like skip lorry barreling down behind us as we're trying to accelerate in this car that doesn't want to. Oh. Oh yeah, that was the other thing. The window doesn't really shut. You have to um, you have to push it back. Should have demonstrated that when I wasn't driving, but you know. Our gear gate is a little bit broken as well. It's the least of our worries at the moment. How are you enjoying the ride? It's comfy. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be brilliant. It'd be a great little car if it hadn't pooped its own second cylinder out, basically. And it's just just jolting along the whole time. Hopefully that'll come across on camera. Probably will, because you're shaking around like a shitting dog. <laughs> just feel that, you're just going, and all of a sudden it's like, ooh, as if the engine's just dropped out from underneath the car. Many unscrupulous dealer would just fill this with like syrup oil that's like thick as, cheese and try and disguise it and sell it to some unknowing customer but obviously I couldn't and I wouldn't do that. I also feel like it's getting worse especially at like low There we have it. Is that the worst £1,500 I've ever spent? Yes, it probably is. Um, combine it with the other ones and it's actually quite a lot of money. So uh, be warned, they're my top tips for if someone's desperately trying to get you to look at their part exchange early before anything else. You always want to check it over when it's cold. Treat it as if you were, you know, buying any other car, I guess. Ideally, you want to see it cold. And what was the other thing? If they're a doctor, they want to tell you they're a doctor or they're a lawyer, or anything that they think is like morally, you know, gives them some credit. They're a dodgy mother So watch out, because they'll just use that to their advantage. And if they're questioning like, is this gonna be done? Is that gonna be done? Because we're so far away, we definitely don't wanna come back. We basically definitely don't wanna phone you again. Then it's probably because they're trying to hide something. So don't be an idiot like me, make sure you do your research when it comes to this. I'm gonna to have to scrap these, I think. Well, scrap that one anyway. So I imagine I'll probably get 350 quid, 400 quid for that, because just no one wants it, because it's got a dodgy engine, much like the RAV4. Um, 
it needs a fuel pump, people are just going to assume that it's really bad. That's on 180,000 miles, it's just not worth the hassle. So, yeah, that's it. I just thought I'd share in my bad luck with you how I got stung by Dr. Crime. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Maybe I could try and make some money back by all of you lovely people watching this video. It certainly won't cover my losses, but it'll, you know, it helped me feel better for sure. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm giving away a watch that's worth more than all of those, all, pretty much most of the cars down here combined. It's a £2,000 Tag Heuer Formula One watch. I'm giving it away completely free when we hit 75,000 subscribers. We're on about, what are we on now? 50 eight or something so we're, we're not a million miles off but it would really help out if you got on board and joined and also if you want to win a nice car like a Corsa VXR or by the time this video goes out there will be another car um, I don't know if it will be out so I can't say what it is it's not mine it's someone else's they're putting it on the on the website but either way check out feelgoodcompetitions.com there's loads of competitions on there great odds and you get to help out a charity as well I think that's all I need to tell you thank you so much for watching I'll see you next time